What's up, everybody? First, I'd like to say I did see No Surrender. It wasn't that good, but, you know, it's a throwaway. So, you know, I'm not even going to review it. I don't even think it's worth that, but it's a throwaway pay-per-view, so don't feel that bad. Um, Bound for Good should be way better, let's hope. Uh, and it wasn't bad enough to be that offensive, but it was a throwaway, so it doesn't really bother me that much. But anyway, um, this that's not what this video is about, though. This video is about... This video I saw thanks to A Stone 08. A Stone 08, if y'all don't know, is a great shooter on here. And I got on here last night and I saw his response to this guy named Hellsing920 about, you know, how Ring of Honor fanboys are so bad. And, you know, I just thought he did a great job detracting some of his points. And I just wanted to add to that a little bit. But, uh, you know, and for the first time ever, I actually took notes. That's how much I want to dissect his argument against Ring of Honor fanboys. Okay, first thing he said I didn't agree with. Ring of Honor is a gimmick-laden company. Okay, lately, they have been having at least one gimmick match a show. But to say that Ring of Honor is gimmick-laden with all these serious characters they have, such as Brian Danielson, such as Brent Albright, such as Nigel McGuinness, such as the Briscoes, The Age of the Fall, Austin Aries, I can go on and on all day, is ridiculous. It doesn't have a bunch of gimmick matches, and most gimmick matches have meaning. The only person that has a gimmick match for no apparent reason is the Necro Butcher, because that's part of his gimmick. Okay, Ring of Honor is the worst fanboys. You can't really measure how bad a fanboy is. A fanboy is a fanboy. That's like you're playing Vomit the Garbage. It's still bad in the end. Okay. And the first, the another thing that got me when he talked about how you put a guy in a mask and have him just speak gibberish and, you know, he gets over and that's his gimmick, that, you know, Delirious. Okay. And he said he was wrong right here when he said Delirious first, you know, he got, they got Delirious from Chicago Pro. That's not true at all. The first place, the first major independent that Delirious shine in the United States is IWA Mid-South. That's why if you watch the shoot interview, I recommend that DVD. You got to understand what he's saying. He's still in character. But if you watch his shoot interview, he says the IWA Mid South will always hold a special place in his heart because it gave him his first opportunity. So he's wrong there. Delirious didn't go to, he didn't really appear in Chicago that often until like 05. Okay, uh, and then he brought up the CSC, the uh, Christopher Street Connection, and he said it was a Billy and Chuck ripoff. They were around before Billy and Chuck. So yeah. <laughs> um,. Let's see, uh, every wrestler has some sort of gimmick. Okay, um, yeah, every wrestler has, oh, that's just one of my points. Every wrestler has some sort of gimmick. Whether it's real kitty or not, Brian Danielson, the best in the world, that's just a gimmick. Nigel McGinnis, the lariats and all that, it's just a gimmick. Austin Aries being the wrestling machine and how great he is, is a gimmick. Jimmy Jacobs, gimmick. Uh, Tyler Black, gimmick. Necro Butcher, gimmick. Kevin Steen, gimmick. El Generico, gimmick. I can go, I can go on all day. It might not be an obvious gimmick like Delirious, but bottom line, they all have gimmicks. Okay. And the biggest problem I had, always take shots at other companies. Okay. And, and if anybody else agrees with me, the Stars of Honor seemed distasteful the way they were talking about other companies. Such as the, That was the point of the DVD. To get WWE slash TNA fans to enter Ring of Honor with guys that they have seen before in a different environment. They didn't take not one shot at any other, at any other company. They just said, this guy is in such and such now. And... Check him out in Ring of Honor. Check out how he is with no limitations and no restrictions. Because they're just saying the WWE and TNA has limitations and restrictions. Because the fans will get to see those wrestlers in a different type of environment. And the fanboys don't do this either. CM Punk wins the title. I don't know not one. When he won the world title, I didn't know not one Ring of Honor fan that was not happy for Punk. Same thing with Joe. Even though it took forever for TNA to get the, get the belt to Joe, which is just fact. That's not even opinion. It's fact. It took forever for them to get the belt to Joe, but... But always fans were still happy. I was excited because Joe is still my favorite wrestler. With me being a diehard Ring of Honor fan. So you're wrong about that also. Okay. And he's talking about, he says that, you know, most most uh, most YouTube shooters come on. They're biased towards a certain company. And a lot of them are Ring of Honor biased. Newsflash, homeboy. Everybody is biased. Everybody to a certain degree is biased. 
Bottom line, I love chicken. Some people love pork chops. I think chicken is better than pork chops. This is a simple example. And I'm just, and no matter what, no matter what how chicken is made, I'm probably gonna like it better than the pork chops because I like chicken better. <laughs> it just me, you know what I'm saying? It makes no sense. Well, just pork in general, not just pork chops, but pork in general. You know what I'm saying? But that's just simple, you know. Okay. Oh, which has the most fanboys? Okay, obviously not. In all honesty, ROH is just the biggest independent in the United States. The biggest wrestling company in the United States is the WWE. And I promise you, there are tons and tons more WWE fanboys than there will ever be Ring of Honor fanboys. To look around. <laughs> uh, example, I mean, I got no problem with the guy, but Ryan will be good as an example. I mean, if he, if he takes exception with me saying that it's true, okay. I have no problem with the guy, but that's just true. All right, um... Oh yeah, he said that if you want to buy Ring of Honor DVDs, you have to get them from places like High Spots, which doesn't have that many, or RF Video, which doesn't even sell Ring of Honor DVDs anymore. Wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. And then he said that uh, basically fanboys, you know, they jump, they jump on something and then they just ride it and they keep riding it no matter what. That's the definition of a fanboy. <laughs> okay, <laughs> um, Strong is not a backbreaker monkey anymore. If you watch his matches recently, a lot of times Strong is, is delivering chops, delivering suplexes. His finisher now is more so the Gibson driver and the Stronghold and the, uh, the reverse Texas Cloverleaf move. I can't remember the name of it right now. He does not deliver that many backbreakers anymore. Maybe three to four each match, but that's about it. You know what I'm saying? Maybe or maybe a few more here and there, but it's not that many. And a lot of times he throws the gut buster, so yeah, he's not as bad as he used to be with that. Okay, and he said, Ring of Honor fanboys pray to God that they can be EC what ECW fans were. Um, ECW had fanboys. Everything has fanboys. It doesn't matter. Sony, Microsoft, uh, Nintendo, um, BET, MTV, VH1, NBA, college basketball, the NFL, college football, do I have to go on, DC Comics, Marvel Comics, Midway, Acclaim, uh, um, freaking Bungie, uh, I can go, I can go on all day with this, you know what I'm saying, Jay-Z, Nas, Tupac, Biggie, Eminem, dude, I mean, yeah, exactly, Every, there's fanboys everywhere, okay, and he compared, he tried to compare the conditions of the Murky Wreck, Murphy Wreck, some, uh, the, uh, my bad, the, uh, ECW fans, like when they went to, you know, the ECW arena, which is a very historic arena. I am a huge ECW fan, okay? I am a huge ECW fan, okay? And I will tell you that I respect that arena to death to this day, you know what I'm saying? A lot of my favorite memories happened there. Tommy Dreamer getting thrown through all the tables by Brian Lee. S uh, Sabu and RVD tearing it up in the stretcher match. Um... Mike Awesome and Mike Awesome power bomb Masato Tanaka over the top and his head smacking off the concrete. I could be here all day. Shane Douglas throwing down the title. I didn't see it till later because I didn't get into ECW until two thousand. I mean, until nineteen ninety six, and uh, and I'll and I'm and I'm tw and I'll be twenty in a week. So yeah, there you go. Um, you you know what I'm saying? But it's a lot of moments. I mean, uh, freaking uh, Eddie Guerrero's and um. Dean Malenko's final match in the ECW. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Alright, and then he said, then and, but the Murphy Rec Center, in many ways, is very similar to the ECW arena. No air. No, uh, no heat. It was either really cold in there or really hot in there. But, bottom line. You know what I mean? Okay. So, yeah. I mean, it went through the same conditions. And then he said that... We have YouTube shooters now, and YouTube shooters get on YouTube, and they buys towards a certain company, or, you know what I'm saying, a lot of those fans are Ring of Honor fans. Okay, TNA fans do the same, Bill and Doug being the most famous, and WWE fans do the same. I hate to say this, have no problem with the guy, but Ryan will be good, did it for a long time. You know what I'm saying? Uh, let's see, um... That's about all I wanted to say. Oh, yeah, and ECW fans, for the record, would have did the same thing. And I'll holler at y'all later. Peace.